Russian missiles hit Ukraine today in the biggest wave of strikes in weeks. The brutal attack damaged a power station and other critical infrastructure during freezing winter weather conditions. According to a Ukrainian general, Russia fired 69 missiles. The Ukrainian military shot down 54. Just a year ago, it seemed impossible that our state would have Patriot air defense systems, but now there is such an agreement. The attacks killed at least two people around Kharkiv and wounded at least six people across the country. Russia dispatched explosive drones to select regions overnight before broadening the barrage with air and sea-based missiles. And as the fighting in Ukraine continues, we're getting some insight first at four as 2022 comes to a close. And joining us is the person who has provided our analysis on this conflict throughout the year, Professor Stephen Caliendo from North Central College. Once again, Professor, thank you so much for being on the program. We appreciate it. It's good to see you both. Okay, so let's, uh, l let's get your assessment of the state of things as we uh, turn the corner between 2022 and 2023. Uh, the state of this conflict, who would you say, is there a winner at this point? Are they, uh, do they each, uh, does each side have its own disadvantages at this point? Uh, what is your take and what do you see happening uh, as we turn the corner here on the new year? That's it, Anthony. You've got it. It's, it's uh, you know, we can look at pros and cons on both sides of this conflict. Um, when we started to talk about this some 10 months ago, uh, it would have been hard to predict that we'd be here, uh, that we would still be going on. We thought that Russia was um, much more powerful and would uh, make quick work of what they wanted to do with Ukraine. And the Ukrainian people had shown tremendous perseverance um, with, uh, of course, uh, you know, a lot of nations behind them uh, supplying them. And so um, I think it's, you know, as, as we're in these winter months and the infrastructure starts to be damaged, uh, that makes things more difficult. Uh, but I don't think you would uh, say that anybody's in a, in a position to feel like a winner at this point. So a Harvard professor is saying that Russia and Ukraine will soon have to make awkward compromises if they don't want their conflict to become a forever war. As you mentioned, we're 10 months into this. I think when we initially started reporting on this, we thought it would be the top story every night and then it would be done with. But it's not. That's so correct, and and I and I think that you know the, it's wars different these days for sure. This is um this is a different kind of approach uh, that the, that the, because this isn't a NATO country technically, even though the West has sort of rallied behind uh, the Ukraine, it's not it's not technically a NATO country, and so we don't have the same kind of uh, commitments uh, that are there. So it, at this point, it's been all equipment, um, and I think that the the concern is that the rhetoric is ramped up to such a point that there doesn't seem much room for a compromise. As we've talked about for months, though, if Putin is going to withdraw, we have to have some way to have him do so uh, without being completely embarrassed. And so, um, you know, they have the infrastructure to continue. The fight is not going on in Russian territory, of course, for the most part. Uh, it's going on in Ukrainian territory. And so that's an advantage uh, for Russia. Uh, but I think that uh, Putin would have thought that this would have been over a long time ago. And that's certainly not the case. Have you seen any improvements or changes in that rhetoric uh, over the months? Do you feel like it's, it, it has indeed ramped? up and do you do you do you see a possibility that it could de-escalate I haven't. In fact, it's it's in some ways it's worse in the last couple of weeks. You know, um, I think there was a there was a spokesperson uh, for the Ukrainian government referring uh, to to Putin as the devil or, or evil or, or something along those lines. And you can certainly understand why. But th those aren't the kind of things that get you to a negotiating table. Uh, and so, you know, words don't win or lose wars. And people can forget about uh, comments that are made. They're made for other kinds of reasons. But that's all going to be put behind us at some point if there's going to be a solution uh, that's that's acceptable to both sides. You know, there is seems to be some fatigue among some groups about continuously sending money to Ukraine. I mean, we're talking billions of dollars when there are issues in our own country that we need to address. How much longer do you think the United States is going to fund the Ukrainian military? Oh, my goodness. That's the question of the day. I think you, you got it exactly right. I remember that next week the Republicans take over control of the House of Representatives by a very slim margin, just the four seats uh, and, and a handful. I mean, I think the, the vast majority of those Republicans understand that it's important uh, to continue to um, to support the Ukrainian people, not just for the Ukraine, uh, but to keep Putin in check and then other autocrats across the world in check. But there are a handful of Republicans and maybe enough uh, to cause trouble for the, the incoming speech. 
speaker uh, that might make it difficult. And so if, unless you can get bipartisan support for this level of spending, it's going to dry up. And so that's going to be uh, that's going to be President Biden's challenge uh, as we move into 2023. And we're taking a look at uh, footage from uh, President Zelensky's recent address uh, to Congress. What's your assessment of that speech and how that speech may impact the situation going forward? Yeah, it was remarkable, and I was watching closely to see how many, you know, people were standing up, and at what times, just as we do sometimes when we talk about the State of the Union address that, that we get in the in the winter time. Um, but it was really powerful to have him there in person and to see bipartisan support uh, for what was happening, and he was making the case. Don't just he was making the case. Don't just do this for the Ukraine. Do this for the world. Do this for the, the for democracy. Do this for for the side of right. Uh, and it was very hard to argue those points. Of course, it is very expensive. It's been very expensive. Uh, the United States has has borne a, a great bit of that burden. Um, but I think that the case needs to be made. Uh, it has to continue. Or what are the consequences? All right, Professor Stephen Caliendo. Thank you so much.